Welcome back to Reynolds Runabouts, everybody. This is Jeffrey Reynolds. Today is the day I'm going to not only put the water line on the boat, because the water line originally that I found was, was skeptical, iffy. Um, I changed the spray rails a little bit, so I know I want to do something a little bit different with how the spray rail and the um, water line look. And to do that, I have to use a laser level. And I've played with that. I kind of know what I want to do. But before I put the, the tape on, because between my two primers, I have a white primer and I have a gray primer, one for light, one for dark. So I'm going to wash the boat in acetone first. That way my tape will have a good adhesion as well. And I have to do it anyways. It's all been vacuumed. Now I'm going to wash it down and prep it for the, not only the tape, but for the primer that I'll be putting on next. So to shoot my water line, I have a, a laser level. Um, I used to have another one, but it, um, it died. So I went out and bought one from Harbor Freight. I needed a limited amount of capabilities. I needed about 40 feet max, um, indoor laser light, and it was affordable for what I was trying to do. So I ended up buying that, and I'm gonna go ahead and put the lights out and then I'll show you how I lay like maybe you can see the laser on it and then I just go with my frog tape I'll probably use fine line tape for the final uh, finish coats of paint but with primer I can use you know if there's a little bit of bleed over it won't be that big of a deal and again I've got to go white on the bottom and gray on the lower level so I'll just go ahead and put frog tape in and go ahead and do my uh, my priming so I have the water line taped out and when you're in the room, it's different than even seeing it on camera. The water line looks wrong because you're seeing the complex shape of the hull of the boat as it curves and turns while the laser only sees a straight line. And that's what it'll look like in the water as well. The water will be a straight line around the hull of the boat as it displaces so when you do the water line, it's a little unnerving when you do it because you're thinking, it doesn't look right. I also use the spray rail as a guide so I can kind of look down the spray rail and see that, yes, it is following that from the, even that side or that view. So I'm going to leave it at that. And um, I will go around the back side and do the port side of the boat, and then we'll be ready to go ahead and do the priming. I'm now ready to apply the first coat of Alexiel primer to my boat. Um, I'm going to do a finished primer white because I got a white bottom and then on the black, I'm going to end up using a gray. So it's supposed to help with the final coat, making it uh, look better with less paint. So I'll be doing it that way. First thing I'm going to do is use the Alexiel um, surface degreaser that it will take anything I've given back to the boat after I've sanded and vacuumed it. Um, because it's, I'm now into a um, a brand of paint and primer and fairing compound that is proprietary and that's Alexiel. I'm going to start with the first cleaning agent and move my way all the way through the paint process using Alexiel so there's no problems and if I have any problems I have uh, a foot to stand on with the company. So I'm going to use the surface degreaser and just a blue shop towel and I'm going to go around it a couple times to make sure I got that nice and clean. And then I will show you how I'm going to mix the one-to-one -one primer with the converter. And then I have some reducer as well that will, um, you have to do it. It says 25% uh, of the batch, but um, 
Andy on Boltworks today, who is my distributor of Alexiel, suggested more of a 12 to 13% reduction. Um, so I'm gonna do that. And if it's not thick enough, or excuse me, if it's too thick, then I'll use more of the reducer, like all paints, to get it to flow better. So I'll go ahead and put that on time-lapse as I clean the boat. Now I'm ready to get the primer on the boat. If you do the application of the degreaser, you have to make sure it flashes off. You, you know, you're gonna dry it quite well with your cloth. I went over and over and over again until I had, you know, my rag was clean. And you can see me, I was pouring it on. Uh, Andy had done that in his video and I was a little freaked out by it. But I thought, well, you can put it on there and it's not too much you can get the puddle uh, pretty quickly with your cloth and it really makes it easy to get it done quicker and then it'll flash. And so while you're mixing your paint, it could be as I am running it dry completely. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna go conservative. I'm gonna go four ounces of the uh, primer and then four ounces of the converter for an eight ounce and then I'll do a quarter. Uh, quarter of that would be two and I'm, I'm going to probably go even maybe to one ounce, get it down closer to 12% and see how it looks if I like it. And then I'll stir that all up at once. And then there's no wait time on this one. Uh, with the paint, there's a cook time if you use the uh, surface flattener. So when we get to the paint process, I can show you how that all works. So I'm going to go ahead and mix that with my mask on. And you'll notice that the greaser is quite powerful. It's like acetone, but maybe even worse. So uh, it's quite, quite good, I guess. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and mix that up with my mask on. So first impressions, um, I like it. It um, goes on a lot like paint primer you'd put on a house. Um, and I've, I've sprayed primer before, but not rolled. But it goes on nice. I think I went in heavy. You, just, I, you might have seen my, I wetted the roller down quite a bit and then I really ran it up and down in my tray pan liner just to get more out. I thought I got a lot out. Um, I might put a little more reducer in this time to see if I can get it thinner, but it was quite thin. It ran over here one time, but um, yeah, yeah, I like it. Um, you know, I think uh, I'll know better to, I'll better later today, I'll put on the second coat, I'll be able to see it, you know, um, how it's working. It's 80 degrees in my shop. I've got all the doors open and my ventilation fan because of the fumes, so it's not bad right here. Uh, pain is a lot easier, it's, it's more tolerable to sniff or smell than the, the cleaner, which is normal. But I'll continue wearing my mask and then I'll go ahead and do the other side. And uh, then I'll come back later today and put the second coat on and we'll see what we get. So first impressions of the paint about Two hours later on the first side, it's already, you can touch it. So the, the, re, the let's see, the test is you can put your finger on it. It's tacky, but you don't leave a, you don't leave any paint on your finger. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do at 80 degrees. Now I'm at 70 in my shop. They said three to four hours between coats. You can put a hot coat in. 
I'm thinking with the warmth in my shop, I'm going to go ahead and probably do one at probably in another 30 minutes. The other side is just finishing up. But I'm so relieved not to see any fairing um, needs, which is probably indicative of the fact that I painted this boat once um, and sprayed it, I think, three times with primer and filled in between each one. And so I was hoping that I wouldn't have any many um, divots at all for things to fix. And the paint being flat really brings out those imperfections if you have them. So it doesn't look like I have anything major. And it looks like if I did have any pinholes, it filled from the total fare. That's where I was thinking I was going to get pinholes. So there's some total fare. That's where you would find a pinhole because it's not as fine as the total fare primer or fairing comma that I bought which is proprietary to this paint and this primer. I had it on hand just in case I had it. You're supposed to do, within 24 hours, you're supposed to get that primer on and then have the fairing compound follow it so that it connects. So I'm uh, really happy that I don't see any number one pinholes or major issues with fairing compounds. So at least with the bottom, I'm going to get to skip that step, which is great. And a few minutes, I'll put the extra, the new coat on. And then um, I think what I'm going to do is keep putting uh, fairing com or excuse me, primer on until I really can cover up areas like in the transom here where you see the, the total fair shadows and stuff coming through. So I'm going to go ahead and keep going with that until it's really muted. And because when I put the white paint on, I don't want to spend any money on lots of white paint when I could be doing it with primer. So that's what I'll be doing. It's the next day and my second coat of Alexiel uh, primer is not reached this 24 hour period where you um, should sand it. So I'm going to put the Alexiel, this is the fairing primer. It's also, um, I should say it's the fairing compound after the primer. It's also made by Alexio. It's a two-part, one-to-one, and it's proprietary to Alexio. So I want to make sure I'm putting a primer on and then using their fairing compound, and then I'll sand that. And then I'll put maybe one or two more coats of, of the white primer on, and then I'll go to the black, which is the, the uppermost part of the boat that I'm going to have to do with the gray primer. I'll do that next. The thing is with this, these, uh, the base seems really, really uh, non-toxic. It, it smells a lot like the Total Fair. The converter for this is powerful. If I had to say one word, it would probably be urea um, or ammonia. There's something in there that's really uh, powerful. So I'll be putting the mask on and I'll mix that up. And I only have a few spots on the transom and I guess that doesn't surprise me because that's where I did so much work uh, in the videos leading up to this. And while I use Total Fair, uh, you know, like Andy said on Boatworks today uh, and Miller Boatworks, is that you'll need an even better primer, or excuse me, fairing compound f before you put on your final primer and then your paint. So that's why I bought the Alexio. Stay in the family so I don't um, mess anything up. So I'm going to put my mask on and I'll mix that up and then I'll go ahead and put some on the boat. It's really small stuff. I'm going to use my little little spatulas. It's that small. And I'm going to make just a small batch because it's expensive. I've used a pencil to mark my um, areas that I want to fare because I don't want anything really dark to show through this next couple uh, areas um, or coats of primer. So I'm going to go as light as I can and the pencil has done that. So. I was surprised at how many I found, but you know, it's, I'm gonna, glad I'm going to get it done and I'll, uh, I'll be happier with it in the end.
So I got all the fairing compound on, probably made a lot more than I needed, which is a shame. Everything time I mix that stuff, I think about, you know, the money that you're putting on that pallet and uh, got a little crazy and made too much, but it is what it is. Um, went on really nice. It's really a smooth texture, both coming out of the cans and in and onto the pallet and then onto the boat. I can tell it's got a lot smoother finish than even Total Fair. So I'm really looking forward to um, sanding this down. I think Andy said to use 320, um, probably the 220 to 320 range. I'll use that and just lightly get this off. And I know that this transom is going to need another coat and maybe two for the whole boat. I really want to get that primer on here thick so that I can cover a lot of these uh, repairs that I have so that I don't have to use as much white paint to cover these things, so I'm going to go do that. So that'll be it for this week. I'll be back uh, in a couple weeks. It's been, I know, a long time. Um, been waiting on supplies, other things in the summer in northern Michigan I've been involved in. So um, I'll probably try to get back to the two-week plan. But again, with with painting and, and priming, it, it's, you know, you don't get to see much. It's the same all the time. So I'm going to just do the white for you and then I'll, I'll go ahead and do the black and I'll film it and I'll include it in the next video. Um, maybe when I'm doing the painting just to kind of show you how it looked before I covered it up. So thank you again. Um, if you like what you're seeing, please subscribe so you get updates when they do come out. Um, if you liked it enough to hit the like button, great. Thank you. It always helps. And I will see you in a couple weeks. Thank you for coming.